is the um, uh, first of many events going on in 2015 since this, this is our 275th anniversary. So we're celebrating all year long. Uh, and today we're doing an 18th century style worship service, which is to say that um, they would have stayed all day long. <laughs> but, but we're not staying all day long. We're just doing a, an hour or so. Uh, and even though they would not have had a woman minister in the 18th century, uh, I'm sort of serving as a in some ways as a narrator in the service uh, to kind of help people understand what's going on. And we have a guest minister from the 17th century, a guest minister from the 18th century, uh, who are both going to do just a portion of some old sermons because they couldn't do the whole things. The whole things would be about an hour long each. Uh, and then we have a, a woman who is... Uh, also an 18th century woman named Hannah Heaton and uh, a lady in our church is reading from her diary her conversion experience. So the whole service is trying to give people uh, you know just sort of a taste of what would have happened in the 18th century. Uh, the, um, the word that uh, describes best uh, the difference is length. Uh, the length would have been quite different. And another thing, too, is that the congregation gets to do very little uh, except sing. Uh, that's about all they get to do. Uh, some of their postures will be different. The only time they get to stand up is for prayer. Uh, the prayer... Uh, the prayers could have been very, very long, but that didn't matter. You had to stand anyway. We're doing communion in a very different way than uh, we normally would. We have people coming up for communion uh, and standing around tables to receive it, which is not normally the way we do it. In the 18th century, in this area in Virginia, there would have been no musical instruments at all. And so this morning we're not using anything, no, no piano or any other kind of instrument. All of the music for the service is sung and responded to. So I'll sing one verse of a hymn, or one, excuse me, one line of a hymn, and the congregation will respond. I'm looking forward to seeing how well they do. And there's no other music. The only thing that they would have sung during this service was psalms. And they only had a few tunes. So they would have known the two or three tunes and the, the pre-center, which is what I'm doing today, would sing a line and they would know the tune so they would just respond. So this morning we're doing some hymns that are familiar and some that are less familiar. So I'm going to try and be as concise and clear as possible and we'll see how they do. And when the service is over, I'm just going to sit down and do nothing, which is very different from normal. wool and linen fabric clothing fabric was very expensive at the time and that we think of skirts being floor length but they were often um, ankle length or a little higher they um, wore hats mostly to keep their hair from being uh, exposed to all the smoke and, and such from their indoor fires and cooking cooking odors the men could wear a jacket mostly um, it was more informal and a, a vest was all right for church but um, you know might be worn every day too people here didn't have as much this this was um, called a short gown and it was worn over a skirt mm -hmm. and a, what we call a skirt was called an over petticoat and then there was an under petticoat and there were no pockets in clothing. You had a separate pocket that you tied around your waist and wore under your skirt. And you could reach it through the opening in your skirt. Oh. But uh, you didn't have any pockets in your clothing. This was the pattern from the um, catalog for this period. And, and this would be the long, the short gown.
is Barry Brown, and I'm very honored to be here among so many of our church members, guests, and especially the Sons of the American Revolution who are here to pay tribute to our revolutionary soldiers buried in this old cemetery and the soldiers of 1812. But one of the most important parts of Augusta Stone's 275-year-old history is the ground on which we now stand and the pioneer founders who are held within this ground. been removed. Everybody see the plaque that's been removed? I guess whenever, well, I guess whenever all the people get out here, all you gotta do is just grab a hold of it and start pulling. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There you go. Wow. Get him some gloves. <laughs> we'll be all right. Hey, you even yeah. take, 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 take yeah. around there before you take that. Just Probably be best. <laughs> 25 years of dirt. You want to come to the store? <laughs> Nothing in there. It's, it's empty, Dennis. <laughs> oh, wow. That's it. It is not watertight when you bury your next one. Keep the towel over there. No. We have the bulletins from October 19th, 1990. I just need I just need my glasses. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, God, for our friend all our friends at church and all the picnics we have. Amen. Beth Chenoweth. <laughs> Thank you, dear God, thank you for all you have done for us, how wonderful you are. Words cannot describe. You fill our lives with joy and fill our hearts with love. Be with us throughout our lives and help us with our difficulties. Amen. Um, so Jeffrey Cobb. Where's Jeffrey? <laughs> Jeffrey, you want to come read yours? <laughs> Twelve years old. <laughs> This prayer is about the ancestors who built this church. I hope in the future that people will keep God <laughs> care of this church. Something like that. <laughs> I thank especially John Craig for keeping this church alive. I thank Richard Summers for most for not making a long sermon. <laughs> Guide us children in the future as we grow up and become Leaders. Leaders in the church. Oh, Amen. Wow. <laughs> My handwriting looks better than you. <laughs> Dear Father, thank you for all the people who started this church, who love, 
something and it says <laughs> not for not to have a war. I hope the church will stay like it is. Amen. <laughs> Carrie to leave age nine. <laughs> and here's here's her brother Will and it has it written by his mother Ruth Arnold. Well, <laughs> This was dedicated, I mean, <laughs> dictated. I don't know what this is. All right. Dear God, thank you for our friends at Sunday school, my sister, and mom and dad, the choir, and special music. <laughs> it doesn't sound like you wrote it. <laughs> I've got uh, Robbie, Stephen, and Michael Hans here. I know which one's, where's. Steven's here. Steven's here. Steven. <laughs> Steven. I could write at three. <laughs> so, dear God, thank you for Augusta Stone Church. Thank you for my friends at church and all the teachers. Amen. Stephen Hahn. <laughs> By his mother, Lee Hahn. <laughs> John Shirky, I know the. You want to? <laughs> age six. Oh my. <laughs> and Chris is as well. Age, yeah. yeah. Dear God, bless this church and the people in it. That it will all, that it will be here for my children to learn about you. Thank you for the people who built the church. John Shirky, age six. <laughs> Where's Chris? This is Chris's. Oh. I think I wrote this one. <laughs> this Chris wrote. Dear God, help this church to stay strong forever. Chris Shirky, age nine. <laughs> How cool. I hope we're not ruining these by touching them. Uh, Richard. Oh. Oh. <laughs> age eight. <laughs> oh, I wrote this. <laughs> I hope this church keeps going on and on. I thank the church for giving me a place to learn. Richard Summers. <laughs> <laughs>
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning and happy birthday. It is such an honor to be with you today for this very special occasion. As you remember the great cloud of witnesses who have worshipped here before you and celebrate 275 years of ministry and mission in this historic place. I find it reassuring that Jesus and Matthew entrust his commission to disciple lives to imperfect people, don't you? People like us who can worship him and doubt him at the same time, and who struggle at times with little faith, with crises of trust. I find it reassuring to know that you really don't have to have all the answers to have all things figured out. It's okay that you have questions and doubts too. I find it reassuring that doubt does not paralyze. It simply is. And that the Lord still uses us to do His work, to engage in the task of disciplizing the nations. That is very good news. And the good news is also and especially His promise to abide with us with his whole church to the close of the age and the continued existence of Augusta Stone Church for 275 years provides the surest evidence that that promise is being kept. Amen. <laughs> 